Hey there, my name is Josh Branshaw, and I have got a refactoring that I want to walk through. So this is a Rails app that I've been working on, and this is the view for an index page, and I've got a series of links here that allow me to apply different filterings to a bunch of content. So here's a look at the app. Styling-wise, it's not a lot to look at right now. Don't focus too much on that. But what I've got here is a bunch of uh, things that I've imported actually from my TIL repo. And I'm taking those imports and I'm converting them to posts. And this is sort of a index view where I can preview all of that. And I am adding a couple filtering links that allow me to see sort of the posts in different states. So right now I'm viewing all of them. And if I click, I can really explicitly say I'm viewing all of them with the filter query param, or I can just view stuff that's newly imported and hasn't been posted yet. And if I want to see what's been posted, well, I can go to the posted one as well. And then I can click all to go back and see all of them again. So this is a pretty common feature when it comes to index pages that are showing a bunch of data. Sometimes there's pagination as well, but some sort of filtering to allow someone to refine what it is that they're looking at is, is pretty common. And so I want to take a look at how these three links can be made sort of visually more more useful, um, and then also how I can clean up the code a little bit. So let's jump into the code and do some refactoring. So first thing, and I think probably the most valuable part of this is, um, I wanna look at a variation on the link to function that is rendering the A tags that we're dealing with. So if I jump back here real quick, we can see that this link to is, I don't inspect this, slide that back this way. So this link to is just generating a tags and these a tags have an href property which shows you what they're linked to and these are linking to the page that we're currently on but adding these query params which then the internals of the server, the controller, knows how to then filter what posts show up or what imports show up based on that. So that's how that works. And so what we're dealing with here are a tags that we want to generate. And that is what the link to method does. Now there's a variation on the link to method where instead of passing as a second argument, a path helper like the imports path, we can just pass a hash like this. And we can get rid of these here as well. So it's just passing in a hash. And what happens when we do that is that the current page, the current URL for the that's rendering this view, will that's what the URL will be generated for here. And then whatever's inside of this hash will be used um, as query params appended on to the current path URL. So if I go ahead and save that, and we jump back over here and I do a refresh, and we can just inspect these. We'll see it's generating the same thing. It's the imports path, and then it's got the query params here. So that already, I think, is a nice improvement. I don't need to be thinking about specifically what um, path helper I apply here. Really what I'm trying to think about is it's whatever path this page is on. I just want to add some query params. And that gives me a little flexibility in terms of if the route or the path helper changes, or if I need to move uh, this to, um, or copy it to another index page. Um, it gives me some flexibility there where I don't have to then redefine and look up the path helpers. I can just use the filters and focus on the filters. So that's the first piece of the refactoring. And I, I like what that's done there. Um, but now I'm thinking about styling a little bit. So as a third argument, I can add in some another hash, which are some options that'll be applied to the link tag. So I can give it a class. And this is a place where I can apply things like um, py1, I guess, py2, or px2 rather. And these are styles that come from Tailwind, but really any styles that you or your uh, design system have um, made available, you can apply them here as uh, class name. 
as part of the class name of the link and then you can save that and come over here and I'm going to give that a refresh and we'll see it should space things out and I, I like that they don't look so jammed together now um, I'd also like to give some sort of an in, initial uh, further indication that these are links that these can be clicked on interacted with the um, this little like pointer hand that shows up already tells us that but um, another thing that you can do to really kind of visually communicate that is to have some sort of hover property. So I'll say hover uh, BG gray 100, I suppose. Let's pop back over here and take a look. So I'm going to refresh the page. And there we go. That's looking nicer. And I can really put a, a nice touch on it here and say over here to there we go. Rounded. Okay. And now yeah, these corners are a little softer. I like that. Um so that's already an improvement, but now I'd like to sort of give a heads up of what is the uh, particular filter that's currently selected. And I think a background color for that would help as well. So um, if, if the all one is selected, then really I'd like to have BG purpose, purple 100, something like that, and get rid of the hover. And that, then indicates, okay, this is currently selected. And then if I were to switch to new, then ideally new would become purple, but since we've hard coded that, then all stays purple. So let's jump back over here and look at how we can sort of apply this dynamically. Um, and I think we can do that by sort of interpolating a string here. We can add in a ternary and say, um, well, let me show you this. If I jump over into the controller, I can see that I've defined a filter type. So if it's new, it gets that filter type. If it's posted, it gets that filter type. Otherwise, it falls through to the all filter type. So I can um, take advantage of that fact and use that as part of my ternary. So I can say if the filter, the filter type equals all, then, um, or question mark, then let's see, let's apply BG purple here. Otherwise, I want to have the hover effect because then that's one that I can select and I want to have that visually indicated with a hover. And now, I guess the only thing I have to do is then update which filter type we're checking. So this one's posted, this one's new. All right, and now let's refresh this and take a look. So now we see new, which is what the filter type is, is being selected. If I go back to all, then that gets updated to purple. These are selectable. Now it's posted. So that's working pretty cleanly. Um, but things are getting a little Kind of verbose in here. Certainly some sort of um, you know new lines could help clear things up a little bit. I could do something like that. Um, yeah maybe that helps. I don't know but I think the next thing to do here is to um, let's see let me just kind of dry this up in a way that doesn't tie us into a new structure too strictly, but allows us to not have so much repetition here. So I will um, say yeah, all and then new and then posted. These are our three states, and I'm just going to map over these to create um, Yeah, I guess a, a collection of links then. And I can um, 
fry things up just a little bit by doing that. So let's close that here. Oops. Like that. And then, yeah, so this instead of being all will just be the filter name dot capitalize. And then the filter will be filter name. And then we will compare the filter type with filter name. And now we can sort of massage these values up here. You know, we could rearrange them if we wanted, and it's just going to all fall out like that. And yeah, I kind of want to take this down like that, indent that. Um, okay. I'm liking a little better how this renders on the three lines here. And then I think we can just get rid of those lines there. And let's see if that renders. Oh my. So we're getting close here, but um, map is now producing this. And I think the reason for that is because I'm doing a map instead of a four, instead of an each. So map is going to, at the end, produce a value that it mapped over here. And I guess it's just getting a series of new lines and printing that out. So let's, let's say each. That way, or honestly, maybe the trick was to not have that equal sign there. Probably both of those things will help. OK, and if I click that, new, click that, posted. I just go back to base imports, all cool. So that's it for the refactoring. We did a series of things. We explored sort of an alternative to the link to method that allows us to just specify query params that will get applied to the current URL. We then added in some styling, did some conditional styling with some string interpolation, which is standard Ruby. And then we did a iteration inside of some ERB to dry things up a little bit. Uh, we were able to use Capitalize, which I believe is an active support feature. And yeah, I like the code we came up with. And we've got a nice refactoring that makes the things a little clearer for the next person that comes in here.